cameras improve every single year for the most part, and certainly over the last 24 years we've seen a lot of innovation and a giant exponential growth in specs. Which is why at a time like this week where we have two brand new Sony bodies launching and already people are complaining about lack of dual card slots, I figured it was time to go back a little bit and see what life was like when we had cameras that recorded onto single floppy disks like this 144 megabytes. So in this video I'm going to do a little retro review of this which is a Sony Mavica FD83, a 0 0.8 megapixel powerhouse from 1999. Here is the camera body, and I will say this one for being only $15 US is in amazing shape. All of the stickers are intact and looking fresh. It has been well taken care of for the last two decades. Ergonomically, it's a solid device. It has that retro Japanese electronic solidity to it back when manufacturing was about making the best thing possible with no regard to the accounting department. And this camera was not cheap back in the day either. This model was $799 US dollars, but the the highest spec FD88 was 999, which even this model at 800 if you adjust for inflation is about $1,466 US today. It's a bigger camera, it has a unique design even though the specs are pathetic by any standard within the last 10 years. This is again a 0 0.8 megapixel camera, max resolution for images is 1216 by 912 which is still somewhat usable, but as you'll see in the samples it's not amazing. The built-in lens is a 37mm to 111mm equivalent with a 3x optical zoom and a 2x digital zoom. Max aperture is f2. There is a built-in flash, a microphone, a zoom rocker, and a bunch of simple buttons on the back. You can adjust the brightness of the LCD, turn the volume up or down, turn the flash on and off, cycle through play, still, and movie, add picture effects, cycle through programs, change display settings. There is a power button here, a power indicator light, and a four-way menu control control. The menu is very simple. It's almost comical how simple this is compared to any modern camera. The battery for this model is the NPF, which is amazingly still very popular today and widely available. This camera was rated at 2 hours or 1200 shots when it was new, but with a brand new battery it shows me 224 minutes of runtime, which is impressive. Finally, this switch releases the media of choice of the 90s, the old floppy disk. Fortunately, you can can still pick these up for about a dollar each so I have six of them for this camera. Now floppy disks come in higher capacities but in general they were 1.44 megabytes each and with a roughly 1200 by 900 pixel resolution this means that you can't really fit that many pictures on one floppy. I average between three and five photos per floppy and if you want to record video well you can but the resolution is 320 by 240 and you get a very short 15 seconds to record before it maxes out that floppy disk. So this is the original Vine camera. Before I show you what these sample photos look like, let's talk about a brand new set of headphones from today's video sponsor, Soundcore. These are the Soundcore Space One, a set of powerful noise cancelling headphones. They feature adaptive noise cancelling technology which analyzes external sounds as well as sound leakage to adjust noise reduction in real time. Specifically, Soundcore has focused on voice reduction which is now two times stronger than the previous generation and it can reduce up to 98% of engine or traffic noise. These have an all new 8 degree floating axis design which conforms to the contours of any head for a comfortable fit. Powered by 40mm customized dynamic drivers, the sound is crisp with high res audio and LDAC support. They charge via USB-C and have a fast charge mode which gives you 4 hours of playback with only 5 minutes of charging. Best of all, they work wirelessly or with a wired connection so I can easily edit videos in noisy environments. And all of this comes for the remarkably low price of $99 US. So if you guys want to read more about these headphones or check them out, they come in different colors as well, check out the link in the description. So I took this camera and a bunch of floppy disks with me to Sony Condo this year, which was in Snowbird, Utah. It's an annual event in which Sony invites a whole bunch of photographers, 
uh, YouTubers, tech reviewers, musicians, Jason Vongs out uh, just to network and to show off brand new products. Now I've been to these events before in the past and usually my friend Taylor Jackson brings some sort of vintage handy cam with him and he starts recording everything with some weird little thing. And so when I ran across this in a shop for only $15, I thought, wow, this would be perfect. I could take it to condo, I'll joke with Taylor a little bit, and then I will flip it for massive profits once he sees how mint condition this thing is. Anyway, let's take a look at these sample photos. All right, so you definitely get that 90s vintage look to the photos it, with the grain, the lack of contrast, and really the lack of any ability to deal with dynamic range. And when it comes to video, it's even more hilarious. Here is my friend Matt Johnson of YouTube fame. Hey everybody, hey everyone. I want to wish you all a happy mm, holiday season. Yes. No wonder YouTube was not around back in 1999. And the thing that's interesting about this camera is just how slow everything is. You really have to think about it. Like, do I really want to waste one of my four photo slots with this picture that I'm about to take? Because, again, it's a hassle and you only get four slots per floppy. So you are making these photography decisions and you're thinking a lot through. It's not like you can fire away at 30 frames per second and just sort through it later on. And when you finally do commit to taking that photo, just take a look and listen as to how slow it takes. So here we go. Ready, set. There you go. And let's say now you want to review the image that you just took. Here we go. There. Next one. Next one. Yeah, it really is something, isn't it? And let's say that you want to transfer your photos to a computer. Well, nowadays you need one of these, which is a little floppy reader. Uh, and then USB on the other end. But still, it takes about two minutes, I would say on average, to transfer four to five photos from one floppy disk over to a computer, which is incredibly slow. And recording a video, that took a few minutes to write to the floppy as well. It's eye-opening. But I have to say, I am impressed that a 24-year-old piece of ancient tech by modern standards is still here, still working, still in fact perfect in terms of functionality. Nothing is broken on it. That is a testament to durability and proper engineering. But the greatest thing that I've learned from this camera is fun. It's quirky. It's awkward to stand there and swap floppies every four photos, but boy was it fun just to take the pressure off and shoot photos that I knew were probably going to look not so great, but who cares? This was such a conversation starter, it was incredible. I probably met over 30 people with this camera around my neck, and people from all sorts of different backgrounds who, at the sight of this, it piqued their interest and they walked up to me and they said, hey, what is that? Or, hey, that's so cool. Or, hey, I remember using one of those in middle school or in high school. And while we can all get caught up in specs and wanting CF Express, more card slots, more resolution, no crop 8K 120 video, better grips, the list is never ending. It's refreshing to use something like this and then go back to whatever camera that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. You develop more of an appreciation of what modern technology has given you because because it's truly incredible what you can do with a small camera nowadays. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.